Hi, I'm Chef Tina Joe, and welcome to Real Life Raw. On today's episode, we're going to be making double trouble chocolate pumpkin cheesecake. Uh-huh, you heard right. This is perfect any time of year, but most of all, it's absolutely decadent and wonderful um, during the Christmas holidays. So most of these ingredients, if not all of them, can actually be found at sunfood.com, so make sure to check them out. Now we're going to get started making our crust. Now listen, I call this double trouble not because it's more difficult to make in the kitchen, but because you're actually going to have difficulty putting your fork down. Trust me, I've been there. So the first thing we're going to do is actually prepare our crust. This is a really simple recipe to make. I'm going to be using the food processor and also a blender. So let's get started. So we're going to add our pecans and our almonds. That's our nut base for the crust. And with that, I'm going to add some salt. I've got in my other hand here some medjool dates, but I just remembered I want to add those last. And here's some cinnamon. And this is vanilla powder, and I absolutely love vanilla powder. So we're going to put the top back on, and we're going to start blending. Now this is going to be a little loud, so be patient with me. And what I'm going to do is as the nuts are, are processing, I'm slowly going to be adding the medjool dates. Now the dates, I actually went through make sure that they were pitted, and take that little bonnet off where the stem once was, because you don't want to chew into that. That usually doesn't blend very well. So let's get started. Okay, this actually looks perfect. I want to show you what this looks like. You'll know that the, the nuts, your nut base is processed uh, completely. When you can see, you can, it actually stiffens, it forms in your hand. That's absolutely perfect. So what we're going to do now is put this in a springform pan. This is a 9x9, nine 8x8 nine, eight eight works perfectly too. I'm just going to pour this in here. So you just simply want to get the center of your crust nice base and then slowly with your fingers squinch it up the sides there. And you can start applying a little bit more pressure and it's really important to make sure that you're getting the um, very edge of the crust. You can see how I'm doing this with my fingers. You want to kind of push in. And you want to do this because this way when your pie is cut, your crust is perfect. So this is the first thing you want to do before you make sure that the center, the base of your crust is nice and flat. Okay, and fill in any holes that you may have. And then just go ahead and gently pat down. Make sure there's no holes. Okay, perfect. So now what we're going to do is make our chocolate base. This is fantastic. This is actually a ganache that we're going to be making. And we're going to use our food processor for that. So I've got some coconut oil that I've gone ahead and I've melted. Coconut oil is really easy to melt. You can simply place it in the dehydrator. If it's a warm day outside, just leave it on your countertop. And I'm going to add some cacao. And some agave. That's it. This is a piece of cake. And the coconut oil is really what gives the um, ganache that beautiful shiny texture. And it holds, holds it together too. So we're going to process this. Here we go. Okay, so that's perfect. Now when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you don't over process um, because particularly if you're using a high power blender, they're really strong and powerful and too much heat will actually warm the coconut oil 
and instead of having this beautiful ganache, you'll have this big clumpy mess. So be careful of that. So with the ganache, what we want to do is use about half of it, and I'm going to pour it into the bottom of our crust. You can see how absolutely gorgeous this is. Lordy, lordy. And the rest of it we're going to set aside because we're going to use that in our filling. And any remaining ganache is wonderful. You can actually store it in a little plastic um, tube and it's perfect for drizzling on your plate. So it makes for perfect decoration. And um, you can store your ganache in the refrigerator, last honestly for you know about a month. And just to reheat it, what you do is just put, um, make, get some warm water and place your bottle right into the warm water and your ganache will heat up certainly and makes it far more pliable. So we're just gonna spread this around and this really is such a nice surprise when people are biting into the, uh, the pumpkin. Okay, so this is perfect. You can see I've just kind of spread the chocolate ganache around to cover the bottom of the uh, pie. If you want, you can go up the, the uh, sides of the, the, the crust. I prefer not to. Um, so the next step we're going to do is actually make our filling. So we're going to jump back over here to the food processor. We're going to switch blades now. So we're removing the S blade that we used to make our crust with and we're going to be putting in this blade and this is just simply the shredding blade. Pops right in there. Put your top back on and now what you're going to do is you're actually going to start your food processor and we're going to shred and this is actually squash that I'm using for our pumpkin pie. Um, squash is absolutely amazing. It's loaded with uh, beta carotene, um, potassium, and high fiber. So this is really fantastic. So let's go ahead and shred this. Really simple to do. Perfect. Look how easy that was. So you'll have a few little pieces hanging around usually and um, those can actually go right into the blender. But you can see how easy this is with the food processor. If you don't have a food processor to shred this with, no worries. Um, just you know, go ahead and you can um, do it by hand. A little bit more time consuming but you can definitely do it by hand. So this ganache we're going to put on the side. And I'm going to bring out another blender. And we're going to start building um, our pie here. So the first thing I'm going to do is we want to add always the juiciest um, ingredients at the bottom. This way it makes for our blender to, the blender blades to process our food faster. So this is agave. and some lemon juice. Need a little zest. Now I'm going to go ahead and add our squash. And by time we're done processing our filling, the ganache on our crust will definitely have set up. Or you can actually stick it in the refrigerator and then there's definitely no worries. And so now I'm going to add, these are cashews. These have been soaked overnight. You definitely want to soak your, your cashews. Um, this way they're certainly far easier to digest, but it makes your, um, your filling really creamy and rich. So I'm going to go ahead and process this. This seems like a whole lot, and you actually may need to use um, your spatula to kind of help blend it up a little bit and then we're going to go ahead and add some of our remaining ingredients. So here we go, bear with me. Okay, so this is perfect. Now we, what we can do is go ahead and start adding the remaining ingredients. So I've got some vanilla here love the vanilla powder. This is Himalayan salt, Himalayan pink salt. This is really 
Honestly, this is about the only salt that I use. The properties, the healing properties of Himalayan salt, I absolutely love. Plus, the taste is phenomenal. So, um, that's one of my favorite salts. This is pumpkin spice. Now, I'm all about the blends. Most of you already know this because blends are so incredibly affordable. Pumpkin spice has about four to six different ingredients in the blend. So if you think about it, if you were to go to the store and purchase six of those ingredients separately, the cost would be really, you know, quite consuming. So if you buy them as a blend, you, you know, are able to, the affordability is certainly fantastic, certainly, um, but you're able to enhance the flavors of your meals. This is lacuma powder that I'm going to be putting in here, and I love lacuma powder, um, not only because of the healing properties that it has, um, but because it really gives a nice maple syrup taste to uh, the pie. This was turmeric, and now I'm going to go ahead and add our oil. I want to do that. I'm going to blend this up a little bit. This is coconut oil, and you notice that this was one of the last things that I added, and again the reason being it took a little doing to get our squash and our um, cashews blended, and you don't want to add the coconut oil because your product will probably freeze. So let's go ahead and blend up. Okay, now that's really well processed. The last ingredient that we're going to go ahead and add is the lecithin powder. Now, lecithin has been used in the culinary world for a long time as an emulsifier, but it's actually really incredible um, for people who have high cholesterol, and it's fabulous as a fat burner. Um, now, the one that I use is by Health Alliance, and this is non-GMO. Please, please, please make sure that when you buy your lecithin powder that you make sure that it is non-GMO. So, let's go ahead and blend this up. Okay, fabulous. And I wanted to explain, the reason you want to add the lecithin at the very end is it acts, again, it's a great binder. And if you were to add it at the very beginning while you're processing your goods, everything, again, would freeze up on you. So look at the beautiful color. So that's about it. And what you can do is smooth it out. Give it a little jiggle. And we're going to let this set up for a couple of minutes. Then what we're going to do is we're going to grab our ganache and I'm going to actually show you how to marble your cheesecake. Okay, so now the filling has set up a little bit and I'm going to show you how to actually marble your cheesecake. We're going back to the ganache that I originally made and just grab a teaspoon and just place a little dollop anywhere on your filling. Don't have to worry about making a pattern or it being a right amount. Okay, so now I just use a chopstick. You can use the back of your spoon, just something pointy. Now what you're gonna do is just poke in where the ganache is and just make it, make an eight or a circle and you can see how the ganache starts to incorporate. There is absolutely no right or wrong way to do this. Really, just have fun with it and start to make a pattern. And now what will happen is once the filling has hardened, when you go and you cut your pie, you'll have this beautiful marble effect um, on the inside of the pie also. It's really beautiful. And that's it. So now what I'm going to do is just stick this in the freezer for about an hour. It will harden up nicely, and then we'll go ahead and remove the um, quick form. It's fabulous. Piece of cake, piece of pie. All right, we'll be back in about an hour. Okay, so we're back, and as you can see, I've gone ahead and released the spring form, cut the pie. There seems to be a few pieces missing, but <laughs> we'll talk about that later. It really is that good. Okay, so, and you can see as I plated um, the pie, I used the ganache on the very bottom of the base of the pie. Just again, presentation is everything we eat with our eyes first, remember that. So here it is, and you can see how pretty the marble actually looks. The taste, it's really, really good. Happy holidays, 
enjoy this one. I'm Chef Tina Joe. Bye for now.